The next topic is a very interesting phenomenon which is quite, uh, uh, you know, quite familiar. You may be very familiar with it, you would have seen it in our nature. So, the topic is total internal reflection. Now, the name says total internal reflection. So, it's not actually reflection, it's an application of refraction itself. We'll see how it happens. Now, before going into how total internal reflection actually takes place, we need to know something called critical angle. So, as the name suggests, critical means something which is very important, beyond which you cannot predict what happens. So here also in refraction, you have something called a critical angle. So a light ray which goes from a denser medium to a rarer medium bends. It goes away from the normal. This is what we know. Now you have an incident ray. So let's take an incident ray. You have a normal, you have a surface. Say this is the denser medium and this is the rarer medium. So a light ray is coming and falling on this and it goes away from the normal. And this is your angle of incidence. Now I further increase the angle of incidence. So what happens when I increase, increase the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction also increases. Now it goes on increasing, increasing and for a particular angle of incidence, the angle of refraction becomes 90 degree. Now when I say 90 degree, what does that mean? For a particular angle of incidence, the angle of refraction becomes 90 degree. This angle is known as critical angle. So what is critical angle? A particular angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degree is called critical angle. Now what happens if the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle? What happens to this incident rate or does that refract or after refraction where does it go? The answer to all these questions is the phenomenon total internal reflection. So let's see you have a surface, you have the normal, the incident ray, the angle I is greater than the critical angle. If the incident angle is greater than the critical angle, it will return back to the same medium. So earlier it was going parallel to the interface or 90 degree to the normal. Now you are further increasing the incidence that is angle of incidence. So it will be reflected back to the same medium and this is what is known as total internal reflection. That is when a light ray travels from a denser medium to a rarer medium with an angle greater than the critical angle then the light ray reflects back to the same medium. You have an incident ray coming and falling on an interface with an angle greater than the critical angle then it is totally reflected or internally reflected back to the same medium and this is what is known as total internal reflection. So the two most important points to remember if total internal reflection has to take place the light ray should go from the denser medium to the rarer medium and second point is the angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle. Now we have to obtain a relation between the refractive index at or at the point of or when you have a critical angle. So let's say you have this ray incident going parallel to the interface. This is angle of incidence and this is 90 degree. Or you can say this is critical angle. This is medium 1, this is medium 2. So refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium will be equal to sin i c 
by sin 90 degree. That is sin of angle of incidence divided by sin of angle of refraction. And what is sin 90? Sin 90 is 1. So you have n to 1 is equal to sin i c or n 1 to is equal to 1 by sin i c. This is again a very important formula which gives us a relation between critical angle and refractive index. And in this formula, when I say n12, 1 is the denser medium and 2 is the rarer medium. So, the refractive index of the denser medium with respect to the rarer medium is equal to 1 by sin ic. That is, refractive index of 1. 1 is your denser medium. So, refractive index of the denser medium with respect to the rarer medium is equal to 1 by sin ic. And we have numerous examples for total internal reflections in nature and some of them are used for various purposes as well. So, the applications of total internal reflection we will be seeing in the next class. Thank you.